smother pork chops. Now, if you're from the South, you know exactly what this is. Sit tight. I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. All right, as always, go ahead and screenshot this, put it to the side, go ahead and get all your ingredients, set yourself up, and let's get to it. All right, here's everything. We have our pork chops, we have our buttermilk, W sauce, browning, hot sauce, Italian paste, garlic paste, chili flakes, bouillon powder. Um, we have our seasoned blend, butter, and seasoned flour. If you wanna know how I made this flour, Go ahead and take a look at the video I did, which is a Southern Fried Chicken video. You'll see exactly how I made the flour. All right, so let's go ahead and get to it. All right, the first thing I added was two cups of buttermilk, just enough to coat the pork chops, not drowning them. We just really wanna coat it so the flour could stick to it. Um, then we added our seasoning blend. Now you can add as much as you want to or less you want. You can add whatever kind of seasoning you want, but if you wanna use this one, it's gonna be in the description below. Then I added some hot sauce, I think maybe like a half a cup, um, but you can use however much you wanna use. If you don't wanna use it, you can skip it all together. And once you get everything nice and coated, go ahead and sit in the fridge for maybe 30 minutes to an hour, or as long as you can. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and set up our station so we can go ahead and bread these and get the frying. All right, if you ever seen my Southern Fried Chicken video, you know exactly how my breading process go. So same thing for this. We're gonna go ahead and get the meat inside the flour mixture. And then we're gonna go ahead and get everything coated. Then we're gonna press down on the pork chops with the flour to make sure that the flour adheres to the pork chops. We want this to be fully coated before we fry them. So make sure you push down, press it, get it fully coated. And then we're gonna set it aside on a sheet pan or some type of baking sheet, whatever you have available. And we're gonna let this rest for maybe 15 minutes at room temp. And then while you're waiting for that, go ahead and get your pot ready get your oil, get it up to maybe 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we're gonna go ahead and start frying these. All right, boom. This is how it should look when you're done. Exactly the same. It's been resting for maybe 10 minutes, so let's go ahead and get frying. Now, here's what I'm using. I'm using a cast iron skillet to fry these. Now you can use a frying pan, you can use a, a pot, you can use a fryer, whichever you have in your house. Just make sure that it get hot enough for this recipe. We're gonna get it to maybe 350 degrees or higher. And then we're gonna go ahead and drop the pork chops right in. Now, these size pork chops that I'm using, I'm only able to put three, which is perfect. But if you had a bigger pot, try to keep it around three or four at a time because you don't wanna overcrowd the pan and it's gonna make the temperature drop and then you're gonna be boiling your pork chops versus frying them. So make sure you pay attention to that. Um, we're gonna let these fry for maybe 10 to 15 minutes. And um, we're gonna let them rest on the side. Then we're gonna build our gravy for the smothered pork chops. All right, so here's what it look like once I'm done. Now, this is partially cooked. It may not look like it, but it is, trust me. So you just wanna get it golden brown. And once you get it to this point, remove it, let the oil run off. And we're gonna go ahead and set ourselves up to go ahead and make the gravy for our pork chops. All right, now that your pan is hot, go ahead and add yourself some olive oil. Now I'm using three tablespoons of butter and one tablespoon of olive oil. Um, you can skip that. You can use the same grease that you use to fry the pork chops. Just post some of it off and use that just like our grandma used to do. Or you can follow these instructions and do it just like I did. But depending on how many people eat it, you can adjust this recipe, especially with the fat. So for me, because I'm making a big portion right now, I'm using three tablespoons of butter and one tablespoon of olive oil. Once everything is all melted, go ahead and introduce your onion to the pan 
Saute them to fragrant until they start to get soft. And then add your garlic paste, your Italian paste, and then add your seasoned flour. Now, use unsalted butter because if you use a seasoned flour like I am, it already has salt in it. So you don't want this to be salty once you reduce. So introduce your flour. And we're gonna go ahead and cook this down until we cook off that raw taste of that flour. This takes maybe five minutes or so. And once you get it to that point and it starts to look like this, then go ahead and introduce your chicken broth. All right, once you add up some of the broth, go ahead and whisk this till smooth. Now you wanna keep working this because we wanna make sure there's no lumps in this at all. And then once you whisk it, go ahead and test and see what the consistency is. And if you need to add more liquid, just go ahead and add more liquid. Because remember, you can always add more, but you can't take none out. So just try to get exactly what you want in there. And once you get it to that point where you like it, go ahead and add your bay leaf, add your Worcestershire sauce, and then go ahead and get that mixed in. Then we're gonna add maybe like a half a teaspoon of browning just to kind of darken the gravy just a little bit. And we don't want this to be too dark. We just want it dark enough to give us that nice brown gravy look that we're looking for, all right? Now I'm adding black pepper. You don't have to add that, that's optional because remember, we're using the same seasoned flour that we made for the pork chops that we breaded our pork chops with. So you can add this or you don't have to. Once you add all that, go ahead and let it reduce. Then check the consistency. And once you get it to a certain point, go ahead and add yourself some fresh parsley, some red crushed pepper flakes, whisk it. And then we're gonna go ahead and introduce our pork chops after you taste the gravy and see where we at. All right, once you get all your pork chops in the pan, go ahead and start ladling some of your gravy on top of the pork chops. Now you can let it rest in the gravy for a little bit, let it cook down first before you start adding gravy on top. But for me, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some right on top of it. Now you wanna cook these for maybe 10 to 15 minutes, just enough to get the pork chops tender. And if it starts to thicken up too much, add a little bit more of that chicken broth that you had to kind of lighten it up a little bit. If not, go ahead and let it do what it do. All right, boom. Here's my version of smothered pork chops. Now, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, and share it. And let me know what you think about it. And we'll see you in the next one.